Welcome back to Getting Your Shit Together, the podcast where we help you make smart decisions about your finances, investments, and the mortgage strategy. I'm Neil, and as always, I'm here with my co-host, Jerome. Hey, everyone. We've got a packed episode today. Uh, we're diving into something that touches all of us, eventually, retirement planning. Specifically, what you need to do if you're about 10 years out from your retirement. Exactly. It is an eventuality. And like taxes and death, there is no escaping from it, at least for most people. A lot of people don't realize how much time it takes to get your retirement plans in order. We are not just talking about throwing money into a savings account. It is about making sure all your bases are covered, especially with how long people are living these days. So, first question, Jerome, when should I start to prepare for retirement? As soon as you learn how to spell retirement. I mean, really, it can't happen too soon. Uh, retirement isn't just a few years of relaxing on the beach anymore, honestly. People are retiring for 20, 30, and even 40 years. And that comes with a whole set of new challenges. So, if you're 10 years out from retirement, and haven't done any planning or haven't prepared, you could find yourself struggling to get caught up or making sure that you have enough money to live off of. But how do you know if you're prepared? Because you can never be 100% sure given the curveballs that life is going to throw at you. And there may be some critical steps that you need to take now. We have put together a checklist of 10 key things that anyone in your retirement should consider. Uh, let's go through them one by one. First up, um, assessing your financial standing. That's a foundation. You have to know where you stand financially at any given time. What assets do you have? What debts are you carrying? What are the different sources of income and what expenses do you need to support in retirement? Things will evolve over time, of course, and so you need to plan accordingly. You can't start making retirement plans until you have a clear picture of where you're at today and, and what is your current financial health. Uh, which brings us to creating a budget. Uh, start living on a budget now that reflects your lifestyle. Uh, that, that you want in retirement. Uh, get used to managing your expenses and identifying areas where you can save. And while we're on savings, don't forget to maximize those retirement contributions. You know, if you have a, an employer-sponsored retirement plan or RSP or other investment accounts, now's the time to ramp up those contributions, especially if you have some uh, catch-up provisions. Don't forget about that elusive reduction of taxes at the source to help with that as well. Absolutely. Um, next, uh, let's talk about diversifying your investments. You want to protect yourselves against market volatility. So spreading your money across different assets, uh, things like stocks, bonds, real estate, etc. will give you a balanced portfolio that can weather storms. If you have not managed your investments till now or do not know much about investments, then be sure to seek out help. You sure do not want to take too much risk or gamble with what you have saved. No, you don't. And then there is the plan for paying down your debt. No one wants to enter retirement with a ton of debt dragging you down. So prioritize paying off credit cards and loans and any other debt with hefty interest rates and try to keep it paid off. Might be helpful to look at doing some sort of a consolidation strategy to get some of these things under control now while your income is still good. Yeah. Um, let's talk about mortgage. If you still have one, and this is a big one, evaluate your mortgage strategy. Should you try to pay it off before retirement? Or do you have better use of those funds? How about getting a home equity line of credit before you stop working, Jerome? What do you, what do you think about it? 
you know what? I think a lot of people overlook the idea of having that HELOC while they're still working. Uh, lenders are more likely to approve you while you still have steady income. And a HELOC gives you financial flexibility if you need to access funds later on in your retirement. So, and another thing that's a bonus is there's no interest if you're not using it. So it doesn't hurt for it to just sit there. Exactly. And speaking of flexibility, uh, let's talk about the rising cost of senior living and home assistance plans. It is something that catches a lot of retirees off guard. You might be healthy now, but you may need to plan for the possibility of needing assisted living or in-home care. Demand for such services is increasing with our aging population, and so those costs are also skyrocketing. You can't be more right. Um, and that's where something like, you know, for some people, a reverse mortgage might come into play. It, it's not for everybody, and we're not trying to push that. But if you want to tap into your home's equity without selling, it's a tool that can help supplement that retirement income, especially if you're facing some higher health care or senior living expenses in later years. It shouldn't be your primary retirement income strategy, uh, but it does have a place in a comprehensive retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And let's not talk, uh, forget about the healthcare costs in general. Once you're retired, you may not have be covered under your former employer's plan or may need to pay more to get a similar coverage. OHIP, or Ontario Health Insurance Plan, may not cover everything or be sufficient for all your healthcare needs in your senior years. Planning for how you would cover those costs can save a lot of stress later when means are more limited. Yeah. And, and another thing we're seeing more of lately is adult children looking for parents, looking to parents for help, especially with something like an early inheritance. With the higher price of homes, younger generations are struggling to get into the housing market, and parents are often asked to dip into their retirement savings to help. And that's a tricky situation, because while it is natural to want your, to help your kids, you may also need to make sure that you don't jeopardize your own financial security. And this is where working with a financial planner is so critical they can help you balance those priorities. And they can maybe even help your kids start on their pathway towards their retirement a little bit earlier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so that brings us to the next point, working with a financial planner and an investment advisor. Advisor, Having professionals guide you through these decisions makes a huge difference. They help you see the big picture and ensure you're not overlooking something crucial like tax planning, or estate planning. Exactly. And the earlier you start working with someone, the better they can help you craft a plan that takes all of these variables into account. Yeah. But retirement mm -hmm. isn't a one-size-fits-all situation, especially the, the way things are today. Uh, now let's talk about the final item on our checklist. And this is something which is often overlooked. Retirement planning is not just about the numbers and finances. You need to invest in yourselves too. This is such an important factor, Neil. Planning for retirement isn't just about making sure you have enough money. It's about setting yourself up for a fulfilling life beyond working. But retirement can last a long time. And if you're not keeping yourself active mentally, physically, or even socially, it can feel like you're just waiting around. That's why. As you approach retirement, it is important to stay engaged. This could mean pursuing hobbies, interests, or even passions that you have put on the back burner while you are working full time. Find things that bring you joy and fulfillment. And please don't underestimate the importance of staying physically and mentally active, whether it's volunteering joining community organizations, or even taking up something completely new, like furthering your education, or maybe even starting a small business. These things can help keep your mind sharp and your body healthy. 
Absolutely. Um, maybe you work part time doing something you love, or you start a side hustle that gives you purpose. Even just being more involved in your community can make a difference. You don't have to retire from life when you retire from work. That's right. Retirement doesn't mean you have to slow down. Staying active, whether mentally or physically, is the key to enjoying those years. It's about making the most of that free time in ways that enrich your life. Develop your good habits now while you're both mentally and physically capable. Exactly. Because having a financially secure retirement is only one piece of the puzzle. You want to make sure you're leaving a retirement that's fulfilling. So, as you go through your financial checklist, don't forget to plan for your personal happiness and well-being too. And isn't that really a huge part of retirement planning that often gets overlooked? It's not just about having enough money to live, but also about having enough meaning to enjoy your life. So to sum it up, retirement planning is not just about putting money in an account and hoping for the best. You've got to think long term and factor in all of the different considerations that come up, whether it's healthcare, senior living, helping your kids, market downturns, and your physical and mental well-being, being, and just generally feeling useful. And it's also about keeping your options open. That's why tools like reverse mortgage, home equity line of credit, or HELOCs, and working with professionals are important. You need a toolkit of solutions because you never know what curveball life might throw your way. I couldn't agree more, Neil. Retirement planning is about flexibility and preparation. The earlier you start putting these pieces together, the more peace of mind you'll have when you're actually ready to retire. If you're 10 years away from retirement, now's the time to get serious about your planning. Go over that checklist, evaluate your mortgage, pay off those debts, boost your savings, and start thinking about those long-term health care costs. And most importantly, talk to a financial planner. And we can't stress enough, don't wait for the last minute. Start your planning now, and you'll be in way better shape when retirement comes knocking. Thanks for tuning in. If you've got questions or need help getting your finances in order, feel free to reach out to either of us. We are diving into something that's not only a smart move for current homeowners, but also something that buyers can consider when looking at properties to buy. Secondary suits. Jerome, I think a lot of people underestimate the value of adding or buying a home with a secondary suite. You know, you're right, Neil. Secondary suites, whether it's a basement apartment, a laneway home, or an in-law suite, are more than just extra space. They're an opportunity for a, the average homeowner to increase both their own income as well as the overall value of the property. And it's a strategy that more people should be thinking about, I believe whether they're already in a home or they're shopping for a new one. Exactly. And so what exactly is a secondary suite? Well, it's a separate self-contained unit within your property. It could be a basement apartment with its own side entrance, uh, kitchen and washroom, or it could be a standalone unit in the backyard. Either way, it's a space you rent out to bring in additional income. And let's face it, who doesn't want a little extra money coming in each month? I couldn't agree more. Uh, and that extra rental income can make a huge difference for the average homeowner, especially when it comes to managing those mortgage payments. Think about it. Instead of covering the entire mortgage out of your own pocket, you have someone helping to contribute by paying you rent. Uh, it's essentially turning your home into a financial asset that can also help pay for itself. Exactly. And it's not just for people who already own a home. If you're in the market to buy, 
conserve properties that have the potential for a secondary suit. Uh, maybe there is an unfinished basement, or you have room to build a laneway home down the road. Uh, these are the kind of features that can turn a regular home into an income generating machine. That's a great point, Neil. Uh, we've worked with many clients who have turned an underused basement into a fully functioning rental unit, and the impact on their financial situation was media. It's not just about the here and now either. Uh, it's also about the long-term investment in your property. Mm -hmm. And speaking of long-term, there is the added benefit of increasing the home's value. A property with a secondary suite is more attractive to future buyers especially in competitive markets like Toronto. Buyers love the idea of moving into a home that already has income potential built into it. Right. Uh, it's like one of those rare opportunities where you're getting both short-term and long-term benefits. You have immediate financial relief through the rental income, and down the road, when it's time to sell, you've got a more marketable property. It's a win-win. Um, and let's not forget another key benefit. And this can be a great option for homeowners who live alone or seniors who want to stay in their homes a little longer. Having someone else on the property can give peace of mind and even a sense of security, not to mention the financial help. Yep, and it's not always about renting to strangers. We've seen cases where families create secondary suites for aging parents or even adult children, keeping everyone close but giving each person their own space and independence. It's about flexibility and making your homework for your needs. Exactly. Uh, whether you're buying or already own, having the option to add a secondary apartment gives you that flexibility. And if you're worried about the upfront cost, um, there are plenty of financing options that are available. This is where we as mortgage brokers come in. Our job is to help you figure out how to make this work financially. We can help explore options like either refinancing or tapping into home equity to fund an addition or renovation of a secondary suite. And if you're buying, well, we'll show you how the potential rental income can be factored into your mortgage qualifying. That extra income can make it easier to afford a larger or more desirable home. Mm -hmm. And it's about making informed decisions that benefit you financially now and in the future. Whether you're adding a secondary apartment or buying a home with that potential, this is a strategy that can really enhance your financial stability. And the best part is, you don't have to figure it out all on your own. We're here to guide you through that process, help you explore what your options are, and make sure that you're getting the most out of the house that you choose or the one you live in. So whether you're thinking about buying, renovating, or just maximizing the value of the current home, consider the benefits of the secondary suit. It is not just extra space. It's extra income, extra value, and extra security. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If this sounds like something you want to explore, we're here to help. Reach out anytime, and let's see how we can turn your home into a powerful financial asset. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for more tips on getting your financial shit together. Until next time. Keep thinking outside the box when it comes to your home's potential.